was in an abusive relationship, and I, when I had a protection from abuse on my ex, like a lot of abusers, he started escalating, breaking into my place. The police would not help me, and I couldn't move fast enough to protect myself and my child. Um, he raped me, and um, I reported that on the PFA, which is a protection from abuse, and I moved away from him to another county that's like 70 miles away. I moved because I bought a house there. It was cheap housing, everything. As soon as I moved, um, I was targeted by CYS there. CPS and when. All right, let's take our, um, our call right now. Let's talk to Susan in Pennsylvania. Susan, did you have a story Hello? to tell or a question to ask? Hello? I'm here. Yes, do you hear me? Loud and clear, Susan. Did you have a story or a question? Oh, okay. Um, well, it's a story, actually. Uh, that's not my real name because I do have an open case with uh, CYS. I'm in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I don't know where to start. So in 2019, I was in an abusive relationship. And I, when I had a protection from abuse on my ex, like a lot of abusers, he started escalating, breaking into my place. The police would not help me. And I couldn't move fast enough to protect myself and my child. Um, he raped me, and um, I reported that on the PFA, which is a protection from abuse. And I moved away from him to another county that's like 70 miles away. I moved because I bought a house there. It was cheap housing, everything. As soon as I moved, um, I was targeted by CYS there. They have... The CYS there were, have like really bad records, um, corruption, abuse of power with the legal government. It's a small town, not very friendly to outsiders. Um, I was pregnant with his child and they, there was nothing on me. The caseworker started coming and, you know, she was not very respectful at one point. I told her that she's not allowed in my home before I call a lawyer, and that's my right. She started telling me, well, everyone says this is a poor area. You cannot afford it. I told her my finances are my problem, so please respect me. And next day, as a retaliation, I opened my door. I saw that she brought the city, and they put a, a sign on my door saying my house is unlivable. So she came back, and she told me, well, I'm going to open a case right now for homelessness. I tried to work with her. I tried to work with the city. I went and rented a room with a lady in the same neighborhood. And that case was approved. And I tried to work whatever they said I did. She wouldn't close the case. She made it a condition that I have to get my house back. And I told her that I'm not homeless. I'm living in a place that was approved, you know, so there's nothing in the law that says uh, a mother has to have her own place, you know. So anyway, as soon as I gave birth to my baby, I moved out of the county um, and I informed her. And instead of moving the case with me, because it was not, I still had the legal custody and the children were not removed. Then they kind of, and it's hard to say this, they ambushed me. They told me if I come back, then they will help me get my house back. As soon as I came back, a few days after, they called the police and they removed my children. Um, now, there was no imminent danger. There was nothing even in the court document that says uh, that the reason of removal is, um, you know, the house. So it's purely financial reasons. Um, the judge returned my kids and the adjudication hearing 10 days after. And at this time, um, I was not aware. I did not know. I'd never been in this situation. I did not know I moved 
like less than 24 hours. They put an Amber Alert on me. Uh, they accused me of kidnapping my kids. They took me to jail. They took my kids. They gave my son to foster because uh, his dad is deceased. And my family are our state. They gave my baby to the father, despite the PFA, the police record, everything. And they gave him full custody. Um, their judge, the same CYS judge, took the legal proceedings. Uh, despite the conflict of interest, I told him that, you know, I had a job offer. I have everything, all evidence, the email, everything. Uh, he refused to listen to me. He denied me speedy trial. He denied me even my child going with family. He kept doing continuance after continuance. And every continuance was two and three months for no reason. And... Um, there's a there's a law here saying if a child stays in foster care for 15 months, then he should go for adoption. So when I hit 14 months and I was in jail, I told him, you know what? I'm ready to take whatever you give me. I just want to go out and get my child, you know. And I plead I pleaded guilty uh, to the concealment of children, which is a felony. I had like clean criminal record, I'm educated, everything right now, I have felonies on me. Um, and even when I was in jail, I was I was abused and attacked by some guards. It's a very small town. They called me like horrible racial slurs. It was horrible. So um, that was the only option for me. And right now, I'm trying to do them after I get my child back. I'm going to family court to get my baby back. Um, they did not let me see my child until after seven months of the removal. And when I saw him, I was on video, he showed abuse. He had like cuts and bruises on his face. He was skin and bones. He had twitches like a drug addict. They tried non-FDA approved medications on him. And he kept telling me that he gets medication and they kept denying it until, you know, I pressured them, you know, because this is my parental rights. And, you know, eventually I found out, I came to find out that, you know, there's a medication that they give him. It's not FDA approved. And I raised this issue with my lawyer and he took it up with them. So they stopped that. Now for my baby, until now, I do not know how she looks like. No one sent me pictures. No one let me see her or do anything. And Right now, I will have to go through the family court. I'm trying to press charges on the father based, you know, uh, on the sexual assault and everything. I don't know how that's going to go, but right now he's using it again. Three minutes. I'm a flight risk and he does not want me to be around the child. And he says that, you know, I'm not to be trusted around her. And at the same time, he is abusive and very violent and have like bad mental issues. And I'm really scared for her. Okay, Susan, but hold right on. now, I'm... Susan, stop. Yes, yes. Because yes. we're running out of time. What this is what I need you to do. All right. Do you mm -hmm. have a, Do you have an attorney you're working with? I do. Yes. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to arrange a three way call with your attorney, you and me, for some time on Monday or Tuesday. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. That's what I want you to do. My number, my office number is 888 And on Monday after 9 a.m., call my office and ask for Michelle. She's my assistant, and she will make set up that three-way call, okay? Susan, I want uh, to... Can I ask you a quick question, please? I can't, Susan. Two minutes. We're running out of okay. time. I apologize. You know, it's a live show. Right. And, you know, engineers telling me we got to wrap up. Susan, thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. And maybe you can call us back in about three or four weeks and give us an update. All right. Thank you, Susan. Mr. Michael Lasalento, Mr. Attorney Michael Lasalento, I want to thank you for co-hosting uh, the show this evening. It's really appreciated. Uh, tell us your telephone number once again in your email so that people can contact you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, 951 is my telephone number, 273 Three four five five, and the uh, email is m j l a c i l e n t o at yahoo dot com. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for having me. Thank you, Michael. 
I want to remind the listeners that tomorrow night at 7, we have our Facebook and our YouTube show. It's called Meet the Experts, the CPS Experts. So it will be me interviewing an attorney, uh, and we'll be talking about CPS cases and answering questions regarding uh, CPS cases. Otherwise, thank you all for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week on the radio.